And I'm going to mute everyone. Okay, good morning. I am Pastor Amy Barsh Odal. I am so glad to see you here today. I want to welcome you to Salem Lutheran Church and School. We again continue on our Zoom platform. Everyone has been muted except for me. Um, you are asked to stay muted unless, uh, unless you need to unmute. So I have Steve unmuting and Allie unmuting and a couple other people that are helping me out with worship today. Please remember that um, if you have a camera and you are able, put your camera on so we can have a more full worship service, seeing everyone and being, being able to feel like we are in community, but it is not required. You do not have to, to do that, but it is wonderful to see everybody here today. Also remember that our worship service is being recorded and it is kept on our YouTube channel um, for people to watch if they are unable to access Zoom at the time. We also have a whole year's worth of worship services. So if you ever want to go back or if you still need worship notes for confirmation, you can go back and rewatch. Um, we welcome everyone to sign in our chat box. That is our guest book. If you sign in your name and where you're watching from, and we welcome you to worship. If you are a guest and would like more information about Salem, please type it in the chat box and someone will get back to you. Or you may email us or go to our website, which is salemlutheranglendale.org. Public prayer requests are always accepted on the, in the chat box anytime except for during the sermon. Um, and then private prayer requests should be emailed to prayers at salemglendale.org. You can also, again, go to our website because there's a little box that you can find on there to link to that. Um, we also want to say today that we send all of our prayers to the states that there are many states that have been affected by bad weather this last week. And we know especially the people in Texas continue to be in need of clean water. Uh, we have at least one or more people, uh, members in Texas. I know Ashley Grisham is watching from Texas and they have been out of power and out of water and then back in power and back in water and back and forth, but they're doing okay. But just please keep everyone um, in all of the states that have had bad weather in your prayers. We're gonna start uh, with another share screen here. I'm going to do our little did you know segment. Did you know? Last week, Dave uh, Weller stepped in for me and did the Did You Know segment, and he talked about who all of the stewards are. I'm going to specifically talk about uh, the treasurer, who is Brant Reed. He is the steward of finance. Okay, so he's the, called the treasurer and the finance chair. Underneath that finance chair are four committees. One is the finance committee, which Brant is the chair. Second is the Contribution Accounting Committee, which Brant is also the chair, but someone else could be if they would like to step in there. Risk Management Committee, which needs a chair. So if anyone feels generous with their time and their talents, we are in need of a risk management chair for that committee. And then the Generosity Committee, which is chaired by Allie Smizer. And I am going to call on Allie right now. And she is going to talk to us a little bit about generosity and Salem Church. So if you want to unmute yourself, Allie, and I think, um, let's see. There she is. I'm going to spotlight her. There we go. Go ahead, Allie. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Um, uh, I just want to start off. I know you've all probably heard from me and you've gotten notes and letters, but I want to sort of say it in person, as in person as, as we can be. Um, because of you guys, because of the Salem community, um, we had an amazing end of the year. And that's important for a lot of reasons, right? Our ministries are so very important and especially our school ministry. Um, and I think what 2020 taught us is now more than ever, right? We have to um, support our school and support our other ministries in Glendale and the surrounding communities and, and sharing God's love and God's word with the world. So thanks to all of you who, you know, as it should not be surprising, Salem once again stepped up and were not afraid. You were not afraid to share your God-given gifts with the world, with the church, with the community. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're going to continue to lift up generosity in 2021. You'll be hearing lots of great things that you'll have the opportunity to share your time, talent, and treasures. Um, so we're not we're not taking a break. We got to keep going. We got to again now more than ever. Now is our time. We are um, we are called upon to um, share and share and share and be generous with what God has given us. 
um, with the world. So thank you, thank you. Um, you are all, um, once again, opening your hearts and uh, to all of us and to the community. And I thank you, I really appreciate you. God bless you. And I thank you, Allie, for being the chair of this committee. Uh, there are several other members on the committee. She's not a one person committee. Um, so if you are interested in being a part of that committee, you can contact Allie as well. But we just wanna thank you for the generosity that you continue to show and share and at Salem Lutheran Church and out in the world. And with that being said, I'm going to go to our next slide, which has to talk about what we're concentrating on during Lent this year, and that is food insecurity. Food insecurity, pre-pandemic, this is just a little information for you today. Um, we'll talk more about this in the future, but pre-pandemic, one in 10 Americans was food insecure. One in 10 Americans was food insecure. And one in five Angelinos was food insecure. Now, does anybody know what food insecurity is? Food insecurity is choosing to pay for your expenses, your rent, your electricity, your medications instead of food. It means you do have money to pay for some food, but not enough money to be able to eat healthy food on a regular basis, okay? Today, I wanna let you know that as of during the pandemic, I wasn't able to find out the American statistics, but today one in four Angelinos, that's 25% of the people that live in the Los Angeles area is food insecure. So it is very important for us to remember this, to remember that Salem uh, is, is, has a heart for food ministry. One is that we, two months out of the year, we uh, do host a lunch for food insecure people on Sundays. So that is one thing that we do. Another thing that we have been uh, concentrating on is giving uh, money and food to the L Lutheran Social Services North Hollywood Food Bank. So we are going to continue doing that. If you feel compelled to do that this week, go ahead and do that, but you will find out more information as to how we as a church are supporting the, L the Lutheran Social Services of North Hollywood Food Bank. Um, I also want you to continue keeping people who are food insecure in your prayers. I, I believe everybody who's watching right now probably had a decent breakfast or will have a decent lunch today. And so when you're eating today, please say a prayer for those people who are not getting enough to eat. So let's pray right now. Oh Christ, we give thanks that during this Lent season of Lent, you come into our lives proclaiming God's salvation. Renew our faith in this good news so that we who are baptized in your spirit may raise our voices on behalf of those who hunger in our world. Amen. And now we continue. Can you see me okay now? I may be asking this throughout worship just because I am running the screen. Okay. So we're going to begin worship now. God does not reside in this place, in one place. God resides everywhere. Today, this space where I am, where you are, is holy ground. We do not believe it is an accident that you are here. Salem's mission is to share God's love. Again, I say welcome. I want to remind you that here at Salem, we believe there is no person or created thing outside of the active love and grace of God made known to us in the person of Jesus Christ. Let us invite God to worship with us in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Oh God, help us to use this season of Lent to examine our attachments and to sense where you invite us to live more simply and deeply. Shine the light of your love into the private corners of our lives, where we have acquired so much clutter that it has begun to restrict our freedom. Grant us the strength to free ourselves from appetites and needs that drive us into taking and having and wanting more than we need or have time for. Teach us that in letting go, we become free rather than deprived, generous rather than greedy, and spacious rather than restricted. We offer you our Lenten observance, and today we place our feet on the road to Easter, and we walk the way that you have walked before us. Amen. Throughout the season of Lent, on each Sunday, we will light a candle. Though Lent is often seen as a time of repentance, of fasting and prayer, of solemn reverence, Sundays were seen as mini Easter's, days of celebrating Christ's resurrection. 
To hold these two in balance, a candle is lit each Sunday for celebration, while still taking time to ponder and reflect on our journey of faith. Lent comes from the Old English to, lent to lengthen and refers to the lengthening of days in springtime in the Northern Hemisphere. As the days lengthen, daylight increases and we see the beauty of God's creation break through. We light these candles, we light today's candle as a reminder of the journey the world is going through go and the journey we are on with God. This is Steve's part. There are many temptations we face in our lives <clears throat> together. We face the temptation of putting our wants above another's needs. We face the temptation of ignoring problems such as hunger, poverty, war, and disease with the false hope that they will go away without our intervention. We face the temptations of wealth and consumerism. We face many temptations to stray from the path of our faith. We light this candle as a symbol of our faith in Jesus Christ to help us resist the temptations of the world. At this time, I invite you to light the candle that you have from your Lent in a bag, if you have one. Um, each week, I will be adding, I will be uh, lighting my purple candles so that by the end of Lent, we will have uh, half a dozen candles lit, but you can just light your one candle. If you come to Wednesday night Lenten worship, we will be lighting this candle during the worship service. So please make sure that you have that as well. And now we're gonna go back to sharing the screen. Let us pray together. Lord, help us to keep our feet moving our hands outstretched, and our, and our hearts open, open to you. As we journey toward the cross this Lenten season, keep us from temptation and help us to do your work in our world. Amen. Amen. Our hymn for today is hymn number 807, Come Thou Font. Oops, that's one of my oopses. I'm sorry. I think I just 
can you hear me? Okay, well, that's the end of that song. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> we're gonna go on. So um, Steve, you are on, oh no, we are on for the confession right now. So I'm going to, darn, I was just trying to be smooth about this, but I, I didn't, I, okay. We continue with our confession and forgiveness. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world that you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sin is forgiven, and God remembers it no more. Let us journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. We continue now with Psalm 25. A reading from Psalms. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exult over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions according to your steadfast love. Remember me for goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. All right, I've got a children's sermon and Yolanda is going to give it today. So if all the kids can make sure they can see their screens. Thank you, Claire, for reading the psalm for us. Are you seeing the screen? Shoot. I don't think that's shared the correct screen. So let's try that again. Not as smooth as out Hans, I'll tell you that. <laughs> okay, that's okay. Kids, you have patience with me, right? All right, I've got it already here. Let's try it again. There we go. Here's Yolanda. Hi. I decided to be in the greenhouse today because I was hoping we could think about or even try to identify some of the stuff in here. Take a look. What do you think some of this might be? Well, if you thought lettuce, you're definitely correct. And there's so many different kinds. Just like in our gospel reading today, it also talks about identification. Jesus is giving a little quiz to his disciples. He's asking them who they think he is because not all of them recognize him right away. And when he asks this, he's getting a variety of different answers. Some are saying that he's this previous prophet or this previous figure. But Peter, Peter says that Jesus is the Messiah, that he is the son of God. Because Peter recognizes Jesus and this is important to Jesus and his many followers. But what about us? Do we recognize him? Do we know who he is? Do we proclaim it? This is important, right? Because Jesus wasn't just some cool dude or this fun healer. No, right? He was the son of God. He is the savior. He is our promised redeemer. And he came down and he died for us and he fulfilled all these promises God had for us. But we are not called to just keep all that great information to ourselves. No, we are called to share that with others. Because just 
the way there's so many different lettuces here and not all of us can sit here and identify or know every single one of them. Not everyone understands fully the love that Jesus and God has for us. And that's why we're called to share that. So what I challenge you to do is to remember who Jesus is, that he is our savior and to spread that. Thank you, Yolanda. We continue with a reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Steve, you'll need to unmute first. The Pharisees and Sadducees came, and to test Jesus, they asked him to show them a sign from heaven. He answered them, when it is evening, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be stormy today, for the sky is red and threatening. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. An evil and adulterous generation asks for a sign, but no sign will be given to uh, accept the sign of Jonah. Then he left them and went away. When the disciples reached the other side, they had forgotten to bring any bread. Jesus said to them, watch out and beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. They said to one another, it is because we have brought no bread. And becoming aware of it, Jesus said, you have little faith. Why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not perceive? Do you not remember the five loaves for the 5,000 and how many baskets you gathered? Or the seven loaves for the 4,000 and how many baskets you gathered? How could you fail to perceive that I was not speaking about bread? Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Then they understood that he had not told them to beware of the yeast of bread, but the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now, when Jesus came to the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the son of man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others, Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be Praise to God. To you, o Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and His Son Jesus, who is the Christ. Today we're continuing our sermon series based on the book The Story. Last week, Pastor Barsh covered chapter 24, which focused on the parables of Jesus. He focused on the parable of the sower and the four types of soil. I pray that I can be good soil to this congregation and to those I meet. Thank you, Dad, for tackling that topic. I appreciated your message last week. This week, I'm looking, I'm looking at chapter 25. Jesus, the Son of God. And as usual, there's way too much material to handle, to talk about. We'd be here all day. So I narrowed it down. A few weeks ago, when I preached on chapter 23, titled Jesus's Ministry, there was something that stuck in my head. I didn't preach on it, but it's been rattling around in my brain for a couple weeks now. If you read that chapter, you know there were some outsiders that recognized who Jesus was. They knew who he was, like the demons that possessed the man and the Samaritan woman. They were all outsiders. They identified Jesus as the son of man. And yet the disciples who are the friends of Jesus and on the inside 
seem to always be in the dark. In today's chapter, we have the section of scripture from Matthew, where Jesus asked his disciples, who do you say that I am? Again, the disciples are confused and they say he's one of the great prophets. But Peter does speak with clarity and declares that Jesus is the Christ, son of the living God. But at the end of this section of scripture, Jesus tells the disciples that they don't really understand who he is yet. Before they can proclaim his identity, they need to have a fuller understanding of who he is. So they are not to say what Peter had said. And it baffles me that they don't know, that they spend every day with him, listen to him, watch him, and they are still kind of clueless. They think he's a great teacher and a prophet. And they don't understand who he is. A famous theologian, C.S. Lewis, some of you have heard of him before, I bet. He tackled this question in his book, Mere Christianity. He said this, quote, let us not say I am ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but don't accept his claim to be God. That is one thing we must not say. A man who was merely a man and said the sorts of things Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would either be a lunatic on the level of a man who says he is a poached egg, or else he would be the devil from hell. You must make your choice. Either this man was and is the son of God, or else a madman or something worse. You can shut him up for a fool. You can spit at him and kill him as a demon, or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come with any patronizing nonsense about his being a great moral teacher. He has not left that open to us. He did not intend to, unquote. Each of the gospels gifts us with a biography of Jesus. I told you this in the last couple of weeks, right? Sharing the things he did and the things that he said. But the central point of each gospel is to convey information about, is not simply to convey about what Jesus did and said. The central message is that each gospel is being written to bring the reader to engage with who Jesus is, who Jesus is. The Synoptic Gospels, remember that's Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they drop hints all along the way in their books. Each is written to force the reader to kind of scratch your head a little bit and wonder, who is this guy? Who is Jesus? They do this by allowing us to see Jesus through many different perspectives. Sometimes we are with the disciples, wondering what Jesus could possibly mean when he does what he does or says what he says. Sometimes we're with a needy person coming to Jesus for help and trusting who he seems to be. Sometimes we are meant to see ourselves in the less favorable characters and understand Jesus from their point of view. Remember, the authors are not writing a historical journal. They are writing for their specific audience to understand who Jesus is. And they are writing for us to understand too. <clears throat> Perhaps they have the disciples, those insiders, those friends of Jesus, perhaps they have them take longer to understand the identity of Jesus so that we can fully understand who he is. Perhaps they wanted the outsiders to understand first so that we, as fully removed 2,000 years later and outsiders, so that we can still feel like we understand and fully can claim his identity. We didn't have to be there. We can understand now. So as Jesus moves closer to the cross, the question of his identity takes on more urgency. The disciples are beginning to make statements about him. The crowds are wondering who he is. The religious leaders are furious that Jesus himself is making statements such, like, such as, before Abraham was born, I am. That's a weird statement, isn't it? Before Abraham was born, I am? For them, that sounded sus suspiciously like Jesus was calling himself the I am who spoke from the burning bush on Mount Sinai. Remember way back in the beginning of the Bible, in the beginning of our sermon series, a long time ago, when Jesus gives his name as I am to Moses? The Gospel of John uses his, this in his book as well to help the reader identify Jesus. He has seven I am statements. Jesus identifies himself by saying, 
I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the gate. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. By the end of all four Gospels, it becomes clear that Jesus will not allow people simply to call him a good and moral teacher. He is God. Today, we have the confidence and understanding to answer the question that Jesus asks us. Who do you say that I am? And Jesus asks you that. Who do you say that I am? When we hear that question, we can confidently respond, we believe Jesus is the Son of God, born of the Virgin Mary as a human, who was crucified, died, and buried on the third day, resurrected. He was and is the Word incarnate, God made flesh, and he will come again. May we understand who Jesus is and what he did for us. As we continue our Lenten journey with Jesus to the cross and then to the resurrection, may you claim his identity as God and be confident to proclaim it to the world. Let's pray. The peace that passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds on Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue our worship service with the song Cling to the Cross by Michael and George of Lost and Found. Michael Bridges is a member of our congregation. You ready, Ben? you for sharing your music with us. We continue with prayer. The response for today's prayers is your mercy is great. Your mercy is great. Relying on the promises of God, we boldly pray for the church, the world, and all those who are in need. Your gift of grace is for all people. Give confident faith to all the baptized that they may follow you wholeheartedly. Give new believers joy in your promises. Give hope and courage to those who suffer for their faith. Hear us, O God, your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. In Jesus, you joined humanity in suffering and death. Reveal to all the depth of your love shown on the cross. Accompany all who suffer in body mind and spirit. Restore all who are sick or grieving, especially those we name now.
Hear us, O God, your mercy, your mercy is, is great. great. Please give us relief from the COVID-19 pandemic. Help us to receive vaccines. Bring our children safely back to school. Allow us to reunite, reunite safely with family and friends. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, mercy is great. Bring justice and peace to victims of injustice, exploitation, and oppression. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, we also share God's peace. We know God loves us, and we also know that God gives us peace, and we are to share that peace with each other. So if we could do that together with sign language, we put our hands together. Peace be with you and also with you. We'll do it one more time. Peace be with you and also with you. We continue again reminding ourselves of our generosity here at Salem Lutheran Church and School. We know that we have all that we have is God's and that we are to be blessed to be a blessing. Your financial gift given to Salem today will help sustain our ministries. It will help us to continue to give to the poor and service those in need, to spread the message of God's love to our community and help with food insecurity in our nation. Please remember to give your time and your talents and your financial treasures in the name of Jesus. You can offer your prayers and thanksgiving in the chat box right now if you'd like to do that, if you haven't done that during, during the rest of the worship service. Um, you can give financially by mailing a check to the church, giving online through our website, salemlutheranglendale.org, or loading the app on your phone, Give Plus, and choosing Salem Lutheran Church of Glendale, California. Let us pray. Help us, Lord, to be generous givers with our money and our lives so that we may make a difference in this world. We ask this through your son, Jesus Christ, who gave all that he was so that we might know life in all of its fullness. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the live. Oops, where am I? He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. When our congregation gathers for the celebration of Holy Communion, we hear the story of God's mighty acts and love shown to us in the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. With thanksgiving, we remember, and at this time, if you are choosing to participate with us in Holy Communion, I ask you to hold up your bread. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. And now to hold up your cup. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant promise in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and forgive us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I apologize. I'm going between the screen and my papers and I'm 
forgetting a few things. At this time, I ask you to take your bread and say to someone in the room or to yourself, this is the body of Christ given for me. And then this is the blood of Christ shed for me or for you. If you are not participating in communion at this time, I want to give you a blessing. I want you to know that Jesus loves you now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ is given for you. This is all yours. The blood of Christ is shed for you. Amen. Amen. And now a blessing in the mercy of, in the mercy of almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake, forgives us all our sin to those who believe in Jesus Christ. He gives them the power to become children of God and bestows on them the Holy spirit. Amen. Let's sing his mercy flows down. Dave and Sue. Your justice is perfect, your mercy flows down, flows down from the cross. Your justice is perfect, your mercy flows down like the mighty waters. Your justice is perfect, your mercy flows down, flows down from the cross. Your justice is perfect. No, don't, don't read the book. You are mute, Pastor Amy. 
Thank you, Samane. All right. Um, I wanted to say thank you to our musicians from Dr. J to Michael Bridges to the Siebel's family. We have wonderful musicians here at Salem, and I thank you so much to them every week, bringing us great music. Um, we have our benediction and our blessing, and then I ask you to stay for breakout rooms if you are able. And I have one more announcement, too, after this. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, that you may be a blessing. In the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. I ask you to go in peace, wash your hands, wear your double masks, get your vaccines, and share the good news of God's love with all that you meet. Thanks be to God. This Wednesday, we have Lenten worship at seven o'clock here in this Zoom room. If you have your uh, Lent in a bag, please bring that. You'll be lighting your candle. Um, enjoy the devotions that Deb and Karen wrote. They are wonderful. This week is about penguins, so don't miss out on that. If you haven't received it, please let us know in the church office and we can get you a copy of the, of the weekly devotions, okay? I'm gonna start, everybody can say goodbye. Why don't we do that? Hello, goodbye. And then I'm gonna put everybody into breakout rooms. You may unmute yourself now if you choose. Please stick around if you see the join button happening on your screen. Go uh -huh. ahead and join. It's Bye -bye. good to see everybody. Okay. See you Wednesday Bye. and next Sunday. God bless you. Okay. Hello. Hi. Hi. Rooms are opening if you want to join. Thank you.